We definitely looked into him, studied all his tape, um, was just a freak. I mean, could make any throw, had the ability to do anything. With all the success that Patrick Mahomes has had in his short career thus far, many outsiders or casual fans would guess he was undoubtedly every team's most coveted draft prospect in the 2017 NFL Draft. But he was not. In fact, he was not even drafted in the top five picks, nor considered in the top 10 that year. Can you believe that? Who were the teams that passed on Patrick Mahomes? We will answer that and other reasons that may have been the cause of foolish teams that took a pass on one of the greatest talents the league has ever seen. Starting at pick number one, the Browns passed on selecting Mahomes, but I mean, there's nothing new there. We all know the Browns torment their fans every year. That is one thing they're actually pretty good at, <laughs> jokes aside they did draft Miles Garrett, who is one of the most dominant defensive ends in the NFL and maybe a future Hall of Famer. If you're going to pass on Mahomes, Miles Garrett would be a guy to settle for. But looking at the Browns quarterbacks on the roster that year, Kevin Hogan, Cody Kessler, and Deshaun Kaiser, whom they drafted in the second round that year, the head scratching. Moving on. Pick number two, the Chicago Bears traded up in the draft from pick number three but not for the best quarterback in the draft. They selected Mitchell Trubisky. In college, Trubisky in his junior season had a solid one year of starts for North Carolina. He threw for 3,748 yards, 30 touchdowns against six interceptions, and completed 68% of his throws. He had one decent season as a starter in year two, but was mostly a liability for Chicago, even though they built one of the scariest defenses in the NFL. Offensively, Chicago did not have much talent for Trubisky to work with. Ultimately, he did not live up to his draft selection and only lasted four seasons in the Windy City. I didn't look into him obviously as much as I should have. Um, I thought it was a little bit different situation for us. We had the second pick in the draft. Um, did not feel like from all the intel you get and stuff that he was going to go that high. Pick number three. Imagine the duo of Kyle Shanahan and Patrick Mahomes. What could be worse than the Oakland Raiders passing on Aaron Rodgers for Fabian Washington in the 2005 NFL Draft? The team who held the third selection in the 2017 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers, may be the most surprising of all the teams that passed on Mahomes. The 49ers, led by new general manager John Lynch and head coach Kyle Shanahan, chose defensive tackle Solomon Thomas out of Stanford. Ouch may be an understatement, we can see hindsight that San Fran aimed to build a strong defensive unit under their new regime, and they succeeded by devoting many of their first round picks to that side of the ball since then. But passing on Mahomes stinks worse than many things. They would be reminded of that when they lost Super Bowl 54 to guess who? Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Back to the 2017 season, they went on to start the season 0 and 8. They traded for Jimmy Garoppolo before the trade deadline that season and turned their season around, finishing 6 and 10. So yeah, imagine that fantasy duo of Shanahan and Mahomes. What could have been for the 49ers, one can only dream. Pick number four, running back Leonard Fournette from LSU was chosen by the Jacksonville Jaguars, a sort of respectable pick. Jacksonville at the time had Blake Bortles playing quarterback who was showing strong potential at the start of his career, but then faded out after four promising seasons. Fournette rushed for 2,631 yards and earned 17 touchdowns, but spread out over three seasons with Jacksonville. He did win a Super Bowl, but for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Running backs are typically impactful and instant contributors to most teams when drafted but there is a plethora of options available every year that taking them in the first round has not worked out for teams as of late, which worsens the Jake's pass on Mahomes. Pick number five, the Tennessee Titans selected Corey Davis out of Western Michigan, a wide receiver that never really developed. Though he racked up 985 yards in his final season in Tennessee before his departure, at the time, the Titans had Marcus Mariota playing QB, who was still developing. It is understandable why Tennessee did not take Mahomes. They never really surrounded Mariota with weapons, so taking Davis was their attempt at that. Hindsight, it failed. We believe Marcus Mariota could have been far better than how his career developed. 
if he was supported with better coaching and better talent on offense, maybe even drafted to another franchise altogether. Pick number six, the New York Jets selected Jamal Adams out of LSU. The safety was an impactful defender for New York, but he only lasted three years before being traded to the Seattle Seahawks for a first round pick and some other assets in July of 2020. The Jets felt that they did not need a quarterback in 2017. They had Bryce Petty, Christian Heckenberg, and Josh McCown. Hi. Okay. Pick number seven, the Los Angeles Chargers selected wide receiver Mike Williams out of Clemson. He is currently still a member of the organization and has had two seasons over 1,000 receiving yards. An aging Philip Rivers was at the helm of the Chargers. They were in win-now mode, so it is understandable why they went for another weapon for their future Hall of Fame QB. Pick number eight, the Carolina Panthers selected running back Christian McCaffrey out of Stanford. He was a hot commodity, a finalist for the Heisman, and all the hype was trending in the right direction for him entering the draft. There were rumors leading up to the draft that Carolina was all in for McCaffrey and they got their wish when he was still on the board. Carolina had a prime Cam Newton at quarterback. The selection of McCaffrey was the hope of a high-powered offense and easing the workload off of Cam. Cam played the next two seasons before getting hurt in 2019 and being released in 2020. Pick number nine, the Cincinnati Bengals selected speedy wide receiver John Ross out of Washington. Ross broke the 40-yard dash record at the Combine, clocking a 4.22 time, the fastest in NFL history. Ross's game film in his senior year in college was full of explosive highlights. At the time, it seemed that Cincinnati was getting a game-changing weapon. But as it turned out, Ross had a tough time with the injuries and staying on the field. Andy Dalton was the starting quarterback for Cincinnati at the time. He wasn't bad, but also was never great. Pick number 10. Originally, the Buffalo Bills owned the pick, but the Kansas City Chiefs traded up, trading their first round selection, the 27th overall, their third round selection, 91st overall, and their 2018 first round selection for the Buffalo Bills, first round selection, the 10th overall. Chiefs general manager Brett Veach, then second in command in the front office, was set on taking Mahomes in order to launch them from playoff participants to Super Bowl contenders. In the trade, Buffalo moved back and got their draft capital. They took cornerback Tredavious White out of LSU with pick number 27. But the quarterbacks on the roster that year were Nathan Peterman, Joe Webb, and Tyrod Taylor. Self-inflicting, they missed out on Mahomes, but the following year, they got Josh Allen. But the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid got their man. They did what was needed to move up and were rewarded greatly. They ended up with a generational talent, but they did not rush Patrick into the starting role. They wisely gave him a year to sit and learn behind quarterback Alex Smith. Mahomes spent his rookie year running the scout team and not worrying about throwing interceptions during practice, per Reed's instructions. By allowing Mahomes to remain loose and use his natural, aggressive style, Reed observed what needed to be emphasized when the playbook changed hands after Alex Smith was traded. Patrick could not have landed in a better situation, maybe other than San Francisco, but the Chiefs were already a playoff team. They had Tyree Kill and Travis Kels, one of the best offensive minds, let's say it, the best in the league, in Andy Reid, calling and designing plays. Their defense was strong and the entire organization was stable and heading in the right direction to become the next dynasty in football. Mahomes was a pure gunslinger during his time in college. He played ball at Texas Tech and lit up many teams on their schedule. He put up video game numbers during his senior year in the air raid offense under head coach Cliff Kingsbury. Says, Patrick deserves credit for what the Chiefs have been able to accomplish, but to say he is the only reason they have dominated is not fair to Andy Reid and the entire Chiefs organization. Environment matters when it comes to the QB development. He was the missing piece of the puzzle but the puzzle was already set up for his success. It is surprising that most teams do not understand the concept of being patient and building organic. Mahomes' pocket awareness and ability to consistently make throws from insane acrobatic positions took the league by storm. The chemistry he, Travis Kels and Tyree Kill formed was unstoppable for defensive coordinators to stop and resulted in a Super Bowl title. 
the second title for Kansas City since 1969. There was a big shakeout for the Chiefs and Mahomes when the front office decided to trade the Cheetah, aka Tyreek Hill, to the Miami Dolphins for a haul of draft picks before the 2022 draft. Most fans and media networks believed that this was going to expose Patrick and bring him down to earth, but he proved everyone wrong and led his team to a second Super Bowl victory, establishing himself as one of the greats. The crazy thing is, Patrick is still under the age of 30. Most quarterbacks are lucky to win one championship in their career. He is following in the footsteps of the GOAT who announced his retirement. Can Patrick Mahomes surpass Tom Brady? Thank you so much for watching The Halftime Show.